Now, we mentioned the supporters of Hamas, the likes of Qatar, Iran, the Hezbollah. But in the 1960s and 70s, this list included one more country. Do you know which country that was? Israel. I know it sounds surprising, but it is true. Many experts say Hamas is Israel's creation, and I'll, I'll explain why they say this. Gaza was not always under Hamas rule. Until 1966, Gaza was ruled by Egypt. Back then, there was no place for radical Islamists. Some of them were executed by Egypt. But in 1967, Gaza changed hands. The Arab-Israeli war was fought that year. Israel gained control of Gaza, and there they encountered a wheelchair-bound Islamist. His name was Sheikh Ahmed Yasser. He would go on to found the Hamas. But in 1967, Israel did not make much of this man. They thought he was just interested in running schools and hospitals, sort of like a charity worker. That's how they saw him. And they did like one thing about him. Sheikh Yassin hated the PLO. The PLO is the Palestinian Liberation Organization, and the PLO was a coalition. They officially represented the Palestinian people, and back then the PLO was led by this man, Yasser Arafat. Israel could not stand the PLO and Yasser Arafat. Their charter called for the destruction of Israel. They also carried out attacks and hijackings. So Israel wanted to weaken the PLO. Enter Sheikh Yassin. He too could not stand the PLO, but his reasons were very different. While Arafat claimed to be secular and nationalist, Yassin was not. He was an Islamist. So the classic equation was at play here. Your enemy's enemy is your friend. And so Israel helped Yassin and company. What happened next is detailed by a former Israeli official. Yassin had created a group called Mujama. Israel recognized it. They recognized that group and that too as a charitable group. They also allowed him to create the Islamic University of Gaza. Today, it is considered a hotbed of radicalism. In fact, Israel attacked the same university today. They called it an important Hamas military center. So when did Israel realize its mistake? When it was too late. In 1984, Israel arrested Yassin. He was found storing weapons. That should have been a red flag, but Israel ignored it. They considered him to be the lesser threat. So the next year, Yassin walked out of jail. And in 1987, he formed Hamas. The setting was perfect for him because 1987 was also when the first Intifada started. It's a major Palestinian uprising. He used those sentiments to try and gain popularity. And by the, by the 1990s, he succeeded. The PLO had signed deals with Israel. They, they tweaked their charter to recognize the country of Israel. They also dropped the demand for Israel's destruction. Now, some Palestinians were not happy with all of this. They said the PLO was going soft on Israel. And who courted these people? The Hamas did. By then, Hamas was organizing attacks on Israel, killing Israeli soldiers. Many former officials have expressed regret for this. One Israeli commander admitted to funding Hamas himself. Imagine that. Israeli taxpayers giving money to Hamas. It was a gross miscalculation, one that is now costing Israel. Yasin himself was killed in 2004 in an Israeli airstrike, but his organization was very strong by then. Hamas came to dominate the Gaza Strip, and in 2007, they took total control. We've talked about Israel's intelligence failures leading up to Saturday's attack. We could say Hamas too is one such mistake, a grave error of strategic judgment. Israel is not alone, though. Many countries have made such mistakes, like the Taliban and the US, Pakistan and the tehreek -e taliban And it's a lesson for governments around the world. You cannot control or leverage radicals, because in the end, you will pay.